A series of arrests by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in the United States has nabbed one of the most prolific rings of Nigerian fraudsters operating in America. Now, while 14 arrests have been made, a 252-count federal grand jury indictment unsealed on Thursday, that's August 23, named 80 defendants charged with defrauding victims of up to $10 million in one of the largest cases of its kind in United States history. What can Nigeria do to improve her image internationally? Joining me in the studio for the first time, Ugo Chukwika, our political analyst. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And still from the last segment, we have Alistair Wilkos, political analyst. Glad you could spend more time with us. It's my pleasure, anytime. Okay, I'll start with you, Ugo Chuku. Back to back. First, we had, um, what's his name again? Obiwane Okeke, a young entrepreneur who was recognized by Forbes. And then we have 77 uh, Nigerians named, arrested and named, not all of them yet, arrested some of fraud. Are we tipping over in our bad reputation? Well, I think uh, all countries in the world have bad reputation. Uh, is not is not is uh, some will see it as a Nigeria problem. Some will see it as something that is is. But I, I don't think it's it's, it's not like tipping up the edge. Uh, for every Invictus will be there's a Superman that did change U.S. For every any of the eight something guys that were captured, you have Jidenna in U.S. You have other guys doing amazing stuff, doing great things. Uh, they are not. They don't represent Nigeria. They represent themselves. And uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the full weight of the law should be dealt on them. But also, uh, also it, it, astray, it gives an extra into the kind of society we are in. Uh, but our culture, we're in a society where our culture has permitted a lot of things. Uh, but in the political space, I was watching the conversation that was going on before I, I came in here. Uh, but in the political space, uh, in our families, in our churches, in our mosques, and it's sad, all right? Um, you know, sometimes we celebrate governors for not doing anything and we we'll still defend them and say they should go again. And uh, at the end of the day, you ask yourself, why should this person be in this particular office? Not in our achievement. And you bring it back to, it bring back to our private space and individual lives. Uh, for someone like Invictus Obi, there was no, there was no, nothing, no, nothing tangible about him. And that calls into question uh, the media. Right, because at the end of the day, he was a creation of the media. <coughs> you had the Forbes, you had it was it was on BBC, it was on LSE, so he had platform. So we are in a society where, where we are more interested in the image. All right, so uh, no, nobody cares about uh, who is doing the work. So everybody is an Instagram age, is an age that you want to be seen, you want to be heard. So. Uh, it seems that we are losing it as a people. So it's a reflection of who we are as a people. Uh, if someone can fool uh, institutions like Forbes, uh, uh, BBC, and the rest of them, and got on their pages, got on their on, on their headlines, and people talked about him, uh, the Belenai Jazz, and the rest of them in this country, in this country. So it, it shows you that at the end of the day, we are not doing our due diligence. Uh, we are easily swayed by when somebody comes in and says, "Okay, this is who I am," and every other thing, without asking questions. And that is a problem for me. Yeah, uh, we have a reputation of uh, uh, Nigeria being a country of uh, it's four one nine people uh, and the rest of them. It makes it difficult for people to do transactions, do businesses, conduct businesses uh, outside the world. So it is a problem for us. It's a reputation problem for us, but it can be fixed. But people still need to bear in mind that uh, the people that did this do not represent Nigeria in any way. We didn't ask them to go and do this stuff. We didn't ask them to go and do uh, commit these uh, uh, criminal uh, uh, actions and the rest of them. They don't represent Nigerians. And it is true that we have this reputation. Uh, the conversation should be, how do we face this? All right? how, what are we doing next in terms Certainly of Certainly, we'll be getting to that in a bit. But I, I, wanted, I wanted something you said now just triggered my thought. And that's the issue of, you know, he fooled everybody including the media. Then again, you consider the fact that these men were not expecting to be caught in the act. They went to great lengths to hide the activities. They didn't want to be caught, no, and they worked diligently. And part of doing that is maybe somebody that's been a philanthropist is doing something nice, you know, helping the less privileged. They know how to work the public sphere in, for their benefit. So. Is the blame totally on us, or it has more to do with the moral fiber that makes up this man? Uh, it's, it's not about it's not about the it's not about 
we all have we all have a part to play. And when I say we all have a part to play, because at the end of the day, it's, it's about reputation of Nigeria. Right? When the story came out, you know, some people that are, are tribalists, that are bigots, you know, took it as like this is this is from a particular side of the country that this is what they are doing. But you have to understand that Nigerians cohabit and do things in tribe. That is why you see a, 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 an outside guy from Zanfara. He's in town one week. The next two is his brother joined him as gate man. So we live in tribe. So what we've seen is uh, FBI trying to. Uh, uh, just expose one, one criminal syndicate. We have a lot of them in Atlanta, in Houston. Uh, California is just like a part of what is happening. But for me, our own part should be, we need to start asking questions. We need to start asking questions. And it is critical for a state, for individuals, for people, for society. It does not matter. For, you, you are a media house. Someone like that comes to you and you have a PR report. You don't ask questions. Where is your due diligence team? Where is the fact checking team? So uh, it's easy for someone to blame him, Victor Zobi, for what he has done. No. All the people that have given him platform over the years, not just in Nigeria, even, 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 even in the UK. Saying. So a lot of us sharing the blame and trying to mold this monster to to who he was. He was caught because it's not just it's not just uh, it's not just uh, him per se. There are people that enabled this particular act before he was caught up. And the truth is that, like you said, anybody that is involved <laughs> in any criminal act, they, you can't be involved with the criminal and don't expect to be caught. Even if you run away from Nigeria security agency because they don't know what they are doing, they don't do their job very well. When you leave this country, when you cross the borders of this country, so Someone else will catch up with you. All right, let's bring um, Mr. Wilkers into this conversation. And my question to you, uh, I don't know, do you want to add? Because I think he's spoken a lot about it. No, but I, I just think, wanted to. Uh, yes, okay. I think, let me let me try and process a bit of what he you said. You just speak a little so I, I like, can ask no, you no, the question. I like, I I like the word he used. And this is the word your station used when I was reading that report. The due diligent part of our society. Nobody asks questions. He's he has made it. How? Where is his balance sheet? Where, what are his trading companies? Oh, some is on oil and gas. How many? What? What? What is employment size? What is his tax record? Nobody does due diligence. They have so many nobody, distractions. Nobody. Nobody. Not, what not, distractions? Not, hold on. Hold on. Not hold on. Felicity. To the defense hold on, of hold on. our society. That is what the course, media has been doing. Hold on. The media hold on, is the one that is taking these monsters. I need to speak stars. about this because in time past, probably the time you went to school, you yes. didn't have too much distraction. You didn't have maybe social media. You didn't have notification popping. I'm not saying that this is an excuse, okay. but then again. Don't you think that these people, as, no matter how much due diligence mm. you want to make, mm. a mind that is determined to subvert your effort yes. will get away with it until that is, like now that, is, that, is that because, they've been caught. That is because we have totally lost it. You see, we are the, we're, 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 we've already tripped off the cliff as a society. We've tripped off. Because these are persons that will come from wherever they go to. They go back to their community. They'll be given citizenship titles. Nobody asks questions. You hear that your son that went to Lagos in six months, he has bought a big car. You are dancing. You, we, we watch home videos. Mama will come out and be dancing and using her rapper to claim. These are not just fictions. They are things that are happening. Okay. Unlike before, Felicity, unlike before, will you bring something home? As a young lady or a young and boy. And your parents, they will first of all whoop you. A slippers, a slippers that your mother didn't buy for <laughs> you. They will first of all whoop you. Will you bring it home? Where did you get it from? Will you bring it home and your mother and your father will welcome you home? You will explain where you get it from. That is when we still had morals. But when our morals disappeared, when Naira and Kobo, Pounce and Stanley become the order of the day, we throw all that to win that even elders, the so called elders of society, now open their hands. The religious bodies open that the preaching is uh, 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 what they call it prosperity. All right, let, so me, open let, your hands. let me let me ask you. So we, we, have, we've we have tripped off this. We have tripped off. We are no longer at the cliff. We have tripped off the cliff. Okay, let, let me let me ask. We're moving towards a yes. solution based conversation now. But before we do that, what are the possible? This is not the first time Nigerians are being no, you know fingered not. in situations like yes. this, and probably in the next few weeks or months. But the back to back nature of this, even Jimmy recently had uh, internal fraud situation that they it's they had to sack it's um, um, some staff. Uh, I'll get to that in a bit. But let's look at the short and long term implication of this, if any. No, no, no. you see, we. I'm, I'm happy that. The world still have some morality, the world as a whole, in that no matter how you try to impress domestically, 
out there, like he said, somebody somewhere will stick because crime does not go forever. Remember the remember the case of the what do you call them? The, this these people that that killed the the, the Brazilian bank. I can't remember the name. This yeah, Enugu State. The, the, the Fred Ajuja. Uh, the no, not Fred Ajuja. The, the other one. The, uh, that they b almost bought over, they bought over a Union Bank. They that, killed. That's not the Fred Ajuja. That's that, that the syndicate. That's the syndicate. But I'm talking, I want to the actual person. The Anajemba. And uh, yeah, that the Anajemba uh, uh, group. We know what how they killed the bank. At the end of the day, the long arm caught up with them, and today they all lost everything. So there is still that slight chance that these things cannot go unnoticed. So that gives hope. And so now the, the, the solution lies within us, back to our... Because we used to have a culture. We have morality. We used to have it. We have elders that moderate societies. Parents should get back to their rules and not be carried away by this, free, by this acquisition. This mass credit for acquisition without source. Press media should be doing due diligence on whoever or who they are promoting. Look, I, I don't want to mention the media. I had that a blogger, some bloggers had houses in Banana Island and all whatnot. Uh, actors, uh, uh, all these, uh, all these uh, Nollywood actors have buildings and uh, all over the place. How? You know, nobody who asks questions. All right, let's just so let's let us start ask asking the question from you, the media. Be bold enough. Leave those envelopes. Those, our, those we, brand we, envelopes. We have our those blame. brand so envelopes. Let's, let's look at those brand envelopes. Let us demystify those brand envelopes. Mr. Wilkins, and do the right let's thing. Let's look at the development since all of these things unraveled. Abike Dabiri has been in the media a whole lot because that's like, like her forte. Yes, yes, yes. diaspora. We also have the presidential aide speaking. I think that was yesterday um, on the television program about the government coming up with an executive order to mm. get to the National Assembly to create some sort of law that will help to regulate um, um, online or business cybercrime, basically, along those lines. And then Abike Dabiri saying that a desk is being created with, at the EFCC uh, to help, you know, manage the cyber, those that engage in cybercrime in the diaspora. Now, my question is, does this sound like real actions to address these issues you both have highlighted as endemic or it is the usual um, rhetoric that comes up in the in the heat of a controversy for me is a proper waste of time all right there is proper waste of time um, so far over the last few years we have a government that that have succeeded uh, in being in, in reacting not leading and that is the problem we're having at the moment, all right? Uh, the issue of fraud is not today, all right? Whatever Bikke Dabri is saying is not sustainable. It's, it, it cannot substantiate it, all right? For example, let me bring it back to each institution, all right? You know, it's very easy when people come on TV, you know, uh, there's, there's a case now about the former person that worked with the, the pre president, uh, Eta, something like that, that's a name. Already, there's a media trial on this woman. EFCC is not a serious organization. And I'll say that, I'll say it anyway, all right? Because if you are a serious organization, it's a financial investigation. You don't do that. You start with media trials. Invictus Obi has been under investigation for close to two years. He didn't know. He was on Instagram, spraying money, doing all sorts of nonsense. He didn't know that he was under investigation. He went to America, I think his wife went to deliver or, or something like that. They got the information that he was in the country, and they got a court in judgment, and they held him back. The same thing with the 80 guys that, 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 that was arrested over the last few weeks. This investigation has been on for two years. So what is EFCC telling us? They already know, all right, even before President Dubai came into power, they already know, all right, that this is an issue that we're having. Okay, on the part of I'm a, I'm a cons person. On a part of communication, what have you done? What have you done substantially over the last few uh, few weeks and few months to change the narrative? All right, EFCC missed a golden opportunity. You see, the thing is that you see, why in a country, you know, you know what this thing has shown the in, the international community is that Nigeria is a place where uh, criminality is tolerated. Because if we're a serious country, these guys, uh, the 80 of them, the victims will be, they, 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 they are Nigerians, and none of them were held here in this country. They were held in, in the United States of America, another country. I know the funny thing, there was a missed opportunity, and that's the problem with Nigeria. We missed all our crisis moments. When, when the FBI was 
it was it was a world press conference that was shown out everywhere. The FCC didn't come out at that point to buy in into what is happening. They didn't release a press conference. They didn't call a joint conference. It would take the EFCC chairman nothing to go and meet the ambassador of the US and to have a joint conference here in Nigeria in such a way to key in what's happening. That would have been a win for them. And that is how a serious organization think. I shouldn't be well, thinking for them. This question on the head and directed to you is. Is the EFCC not being given too large a portfolio to deal with? Look. They are dealing, the ICPC, nobody seems to hear much about them these days. Everything, it seems, is the EFCC, any situation, EFCC. EFCC has countless number of cases in this country to deal yeah. with, and now they're adding cybercrime to... No, Do you think maybe the EFCC is overwhelmed? I want to slightly disagree with my brother on this issue that uh, EFCC is missing opportunities. This is a crime that was committed in the United States of America. All the, uh, the elements, the criminal elements, alleged criminal elements, we are all based in the United States. No, no that's not true. If Victor Sobi here used emails that were domiciled uh, in Nigeria, uh, uh, did some of these things in Nigeria. It wasn't just, wasn't just yes, his IP address was traced to Nigeria. So it's not just, it's not, if you're saying that it is I'm, US, I'm, you I'm, are I'm missing, I'm, you're missing I'm, a mark. No, no, okay, I'm coming. Let, let him come to you. The 77 right. people that were arrested, that were charged on the indictment, are all based in the United States. Now, EFCC, Yes, it's not a perfect organization that they will want it to be. But if we know the amount of convictions EFCC has received on, crime, on cyber crime. Of course we know that. As much as we're but saying it, that but, they but, have but, challenges, but, but it, we know but, that they are working. But, but is it publicized? No, yes, it is. we only publicize the failure. Because my brother has not identified no, no, any no, of them. No, 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 they also we publicize, they help we publicize us the make failures. It. We don't publicize, and that is how we demarket our country most of the time. No, 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 with EFCC, yes. there is no way in God's green earth that you can nail anybody on this earth, God's green earth, on a hundred countries. You can't do that. Who are you? What kind of liar are you? James Ibori left this country, went to the Queen's country. They caught him with four count charges. EFCC has failed to do their primary, their due diligence. I, I, the same thing was saying about the media. You can't excuse them. If you are an institution, I, I have and so finished, far, people have... I have not have, finished my thought. Okay, I have not let's, finished my let's, thought. Let's, I have not finished my let's, thought. Let's, see, I'm told we have less than Yes, we minutes, cannot so demarket right. our country because Nobody is marketing Nigeria. Now, we'll if we felt that EFCC... Yes, we know that EFCC case drags on. The kind of, if you're telling me that Ibori got conviction in the UK, because the UK, the UK, the UK judge that they will not accept frivolous, will not accept frivolous uh, 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 applications that are done by our sons in Nigeria. No, see, here, no, no, see, no, no, I'm coming. See, now, 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 you see, I'm coming. Now you are the marketing. Now we call it. Now we call it. Now you are the marketing. The sons. No, you are saying that they are. I'm telling you, the system that they are working in. Gentlemen, you are doing the same thing. You are accusing me of. No, no, no. You are marketing the sons. I'm talking about the system. 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 So what we should look? Let me just make my point. We're out of time. The FCC must work better and collaborate better with international agencies. Yes, but the one they are doing, look, this cri these criminals are coming up daily. I think, I think we should take that part of what you said. Yes, F EFCC must collaborate better, better. with international and they organizations. Are doing that. Is there, in, in 30 seconds, if you can, is there a possibility that we can as a people? Because for me, fundamentally, is the mindset Hungry people, that's the excuse. What can we do to change this? Well, you see, the, the fact is that there must be enforcement and prosecution. That is the most important thing. They, we've seen stories in newspaper where, where, they, where there are schools, where people are being trained to do Yahoo Yahoo in this country. So uh, the thing is that if people don't obey laws because they want to obey the laws, people obey laws because they, they are compelled to, to obey. So if EFCC, from the upper echelon, we've had people in this country that have moved from fraud, and now they're serving in the country. For example, an agenda is working in any state government. We really so it, it needs prosecution. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you so much. We will continue this conversation after the cameras are out. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, it's and of course, uh, to you, thank you for watching so far. We're not done yet. We'll take a short break for our plus package. And when we return, I'll be sharing my take on the matter to stay with us. The Nigerian army has bossed an illegal fishing and trading ring operated by the terrorist group Boko Haram. 
The operation, which was done through a partnership with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Borno State, saw tons of fish being smuggled by Boko Haram into Borno markets through the popular Gamboro Ngala Road, intercepted and set on fire. The theater commander of Operation Lafayette Adol, Major General Olusegun Adeniyi, warned traders in Borno State to shun transacting business with a terrorist group and added that the army would truncate such transactions and apprehend those involved. Intercepted these vehicles from Gamborungala en route to Medukul. So when they were found with an items which were was already prohibited so far as at that time and as even up to today. That is why we intercepted it back to our, our office. We investigate to a level and we found out that we confirmed from the theater and discover that there has been no any lift onto the transactions of fish particularly. And so we call them and we hand over the commodities and the vehicles to them. And we are here to witness what will happen to the commodities and the vehicles. Nigerians have been wondering exactly how the Boko Haram get their finances, how they go about it. How is it that they've been home for so many years? Well, I'm not disputing that there may be people contributing money financially to the evil courts. There's an illegal economy that Boko Haram does. One of them is fishing. And people from free areas, liberated areas, that have no regard for lives and properties, that have no regard for the national cause to end this insurgency, common criminals who makes money from anything, goes to Boko Haram camps, buy this fish, then bring it to sell. So Boko Haram has an ongoing eroding economy, generating funds for their dastardly activities. Fishing. Therefore, the authorities said no. We fully recognize fishing as a thriving industry in Nigeria. But the fishing as done by Boko Haram is to create confusion, continue insurgency, and continue their destruction of the northeast part of the country. It's a standing policy has been home for many years. No fishing in these areas will be accepted until Boko Haram terrorists are denied completely the fishing in the parts of Lecter that they do illegally. The actions of 77 Nigerians should not be used to judge the over 200 million Nigerians spread around the globe. We must learn, in spite of ourselves, not to jump on the bandwagon of blanket condemnation of all by the actions of a few. I agree with Dr. Joe Abba's comments when he said, and I quote, when people disagree, disgrace our country rather, by engaging in fraud. Our reaction should not be, it's not only us, or it's because we are poor. We should condemn the perpetrators and list 80 Nigerians making us proud around the world. What is also true is Sheo Sani's comment that we must embrace the reality that the image of our country is seriously damaged by the fraudulent activities of our countrymen abroad. He said the FBI charges against Nigerians must be seen as a wake-up call to do something now. Their acts stain us all and criminalize our country. And like President Buhari once said, 
It is understandable we all want to live comfortable lives. It is also important to realize that the most comfortable things we can all do is to work hard and live within our means. That's our program tonight. Thank you for watching and see you next time.